My roots are drawing me back to the high hills. Wind blowing the heather, singing sweet songs. It's a strange business how many people within daily sight of the Aran Massif have never crossed the dozen miles of sea to visit her spectacular shores. And yet, a first trip to the great vista of Brodick Bay and its big house casts an inexorable spell over the unsuspecting traveler. He will return again and again and so will his children. On fair Lochranza streamed the early day. Thin wreaths of cottage smoke are upward curled from the lone hamlet which her inland bay and circling mountains sever from the world. Aaron's age-old attractions have been enhanced rather than diminished by the competition and the comparison. And the village has come to mean much more than a holiday home. But she's small, the island, and the world has room. How then is her rough magic so distilled? Is it all in the blend, really? A subtle variety of strand and shoreline, handily placed for habitation. Sea and stone and sky, immutable, unsullied. Contour and dimension, made meaningful by trees moving in the wind. The frequent splash of color, forever in contrast dell and thicket, in which hide willow warbler, chiffchaff, and wren. A tropical hint from the Gulf Stream, the promise of Aaron, and the eternal iridescent light in the water, condensed and magnified, provide this kidney-shaped isle with an appeal at once immediate and at last irresistible. My spirit is sending me back to the clear waters. Burns running peat brown, naming my name. There is no name more famous in Scottish history than that of Robert Bruce, whose ancestral lands in Carrick looked out to Arran, an island in which he undoubtedly passed some time during the momentous wars of independence. Whether or not he spent several days and nights in the Spartan surroundings of his eponymous retreat is less certain. But the King's Cave, a capacious sea-worn recess, still contains holes for the support of the transverse beams which held pots of venison for the royal repast, or so the story has it. The setting at Drummadoon is as delightful as the tale. And while the pace and movement of life today is somewhat in excess of the galleys which ferried the future King of Scotland from these waters, the hills and the peaks remain just as they were then. Rather more akin to the stately progress of the Royal Galley is the pony track, in which respect the island is generously endowed with its five centres. Here in the south, 
Linnets and finches rise around the young riders on a day of sultry heat. But constant discovery in the old, forgotten places. And when the Durrell is done, the lens sang still, and the rushes of the tails of the pools sang, a Uri sang that sooks o'er the broken cell, and the hearth stain smoored in a flare o' ling, in a hoose that was hail when sheep timed the clachens, the wind frae the balloch sooks in the bent ash, and gulls wail our carrion in the breckens, and the lambs of the driven yows garden and fash. Gently climbing against the slope, which provides yet another breathtaking panorama, the members of the trek, preoccupied with their own thoughts, encounter neither shortage of bracken. nor indeed lack of midsummer lushness of verdure as they prepare to accost the inevitable Aaron burn. Picking and plashing, the hill pony will not be rushed in such a crossing, but the degree of difficulty is somewhat comfortably exceeded by the undeniable quality of equestrian elegance. Onwards and upwards, the route rises through a forestation undreamed of before the Second World War. Such may be the price of progress. On the high tops, however, the growth is rather less abundant and the pony is of the shanks variety. The chaps are puffing, just a bit. at this time of year, with the fresh growth just beginning to mature a bit. Camel. 
Yes, twas ever thus, at the hill race in May, the fit and the fast, the great and the good, the phlegmatic and the forty, travelling hopefully better than arriving. The pinnacle awaits, the views extend, and the Mecca, to which all save a few will bow, remains. These few, these happy few, these band of brothers, for whom descent is particularly sweet. Goatfell is conquered. Beneath the mountain, the exquisite gardens of Brodick Castle are quite literally a national treasure. Their brilliant sculptured appeal, however, is that of the architect. Scotland small, our multiform, our infinite Scotland small. Only as a patch of hillside may be a cliché corner to a fool who cries nothing but heather. Inside the castle ramparts, the magnificent drawing room is not only the largest of my lady's chambers, but the sole reception room to find a place in the Victorian addition to the castle in 1844. The great domestic craftsmen of classical Europe, Japan and China are well represented here, while paintings by Gainsborough, Vato and Naismith find favour on the walls. Needless to say, the opulence of the setting and its splendid, stylish sophistication speaks across the years to its many cosmopolitan clients of today. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the big boys are flexing their muscles. Like father, like son. Yes, they breed them tough in Alan. But not too tough. Without ever forgetting the finer things in life. 